Do you want to make your Ender 3 infinitely better, but you don't want to pay CR30 prices? Get the Ender 3 Infinite Z belt kit. But first of all, roll those credits. Okay, guys and dolls, so this has been a journey. So, um, so you remember quite a while ago now, before Christmas, we did a live unboxing of the Ender 3 belt kit. We built the printer on there, and then we set about trying to review it. Now, um, I want to start off this review and say I love this kit. The kit's quality is fantastic. The actual issue with the machine that we had is that, unfortunately, it's built off the back of an Ender 3, which isn't great. Um, you know, it's uh, they, they've actually got a new kit coming out that, uh, that is based off of a Sidewinder. And if I was recommending anything to anybody, if you have a use for an Infinite Z printer, and we'll come on to that in a bit, but if you have a use for one, I'd highly recommend getting the uh, Sidewinder kit over this one. Uh, the build dimensions are slightly larger on the uh, Sidewinder kit than they are on this, but most importantly, it uses the Sidewinder tool head, which means that you get direct drive. The biggest issue we had with this was extrusion. Getting the extrusion right, our stock Ender 3 um, stepper, uh, our stock Ender 3 motor was not up to the task. Um, we put a dual drive on there, which was a little bit old, to be fair, um, and was a little bit worn, and even that was struggling. And eventually, I put a Titan on here, and it's now doing exactly what it's supposed to. So let's talk dimensions first. So you are now going to have a print volume of 230 wide by 170 high, I guess, um, and then obviously an infinite Z. Um, so the way you have to think about it is up is now Y, width is still X, and length is now Z. So it can be a little, it's a little strange to think of it that way, but that is, that is how this is currently laid out. Um, a couple of issues I had were that, um, were that these belts that pull up what is now the Y, um, you, they have to be really tight. And a big shout out to Scott Meredith, who um, runs Edge of 3D, the YouTube channel, um, because he has done some belt tensioners and replaced these brackets up here. And probably more importantly, the more, the more vital one is that he's also done a, um, there's like an extender piece that goes on here with, uh, with rollers. And it means that when your print has finished printing, it rolls off and it goes on those rollers and it stops any sagging. I'll show you what I mean in a bit. But, um, but what it has meant is that we can print things like this in one piece. So this is an I-beam. It is scaled up 400% from the original size and it came out really nice. Um, there's a lot of things that you have to sort of adjust your brain with on, uh, on, on printing these. And there are certain models that will do quite well on an Infinite Z, and there are other models that probably won't do particularly well. So the first thing is that the first part of the model that you are going to print needs to either be perfectly straight, or it needs to be pitched back towards the extruder in any varying degree. If it is pitched forwards, then you've got to think of how the printer prints, right? If this was pitched forwards like this, then it's trying to print this part before it puts down its first layer here. So it won't print that because it's trying to print that in midair. A case in point is a Benchy. So if you take a look at a Benchy, we've got a rear pitch that goes back this way and a front pitch that goes off this way. So the best way to print this is in reverse, and even then, you'll actually see when we show you, the back, the back of this is not great. And the reason is, is because the printer doesn't move the print backwards and forwards. So as a result, you're now starting here, 
but it's trying to print up here as well and it's a really steep incline for it. So these benches have to print this way round. So you have to reorientate all of your prints. You have to think about support settings really carefully because where supports are needs to be, you need to think about it in a 45 degree angle. On the, uh, on the website, uh, on the, which we'll put in the video description for anybody who wants one, um, they suggest using uh, Black Belt, which is uh, a Cura spur that was designed um, by the original designer of the first belt printer, which was the Black Belt. That was then copied by, uh, by Creality to make the CR30. Um, they then jacked up the price and you still don't have a great machine, but it's, you know, it's very similar to this in size. Um, we actually used Idea Maker. That was again, conversations with Scott Meredith. So we sort of talked quite a bit about different ways that we could, uh, that we could get this printing really well. We just couldn't get great results out of Black Belt Cura. So yeah, so big shout out to Scott Meredith because um, because we sort of worked through, we decided to switch over to Idea Maker. That instantly changed the quality of prints that we were getting. The only the only qualm I have, and I don't know if you can see it on the uh, I don't know if you can see it on the video as the as the light shines over this, but there is sort of a there is a reoccurring pattern that goes down the top surface of this, and I assume that that top pattern has to do with these belts back here. As I said before, we had a massive issue to begin with, with belt slipping. Um, we didn't install Scott's modifications. There is a reason for that. Scott's modifications would have fixed the issue, but we aren't reviewing Scott's version of this kit. We are reviewing this kit. So it wouldn't be fair to put on the modifications and then present that as if it was a finished product because that's not what you're buying. What you're buying is this kit as it stands. So we wanted to try and print as well as possible with this as it stands at stock without modifying it. Unfortunately, we had to change out the um, stock extruder motor. There was just no way that we could print with the, with the original extruder motor. Now, to, again, to be clear, that doesn't have anything to do with the belt kit. It's not even to do with the fact that you've reconfigured it. It's just that it's a bad extruder and it had been, you know, it had been worn out. We put on a dual drive one, that didn't really work. And then we put on the Titan and now it works perfectly. So, um, so for anyone who's curious, you need to make sure you have your Titan in a right hand configuration. If a Titan is what you want to fit, because otherwise it doesn't work through all of the, um, it doesn't work with the belts there. It doesn't work in that orientation otherwise. So we've done a few things. So first of all, as you can see, we did the big eye beam. We have also done a Witcher sword, which I'll show you in a moment. And then the reason why we have so many benches is because we have done sequential printing. So let me first of all show you a quick picture of what this looks like when it's printing. And then we'll show you very quickly what happened when we printed the benches sequentially. So you'll see from the benches that we actually got a weird bit of extrusion between the, the bow and the stern of each benchy, which somehow joined them together and meant that they came off the edge. They sort of daisy chained themselves down, which was really weird. Um, but we have also got a Witcher sword. So this part of the sword, this blade, all printed in one piece. Um, it's a file from Thingiverse that I had to join up in, um, in Netfab. And actually, if you look down the print, you can actually see where the model was originally cut because I hadn't done this properly in Mesh Mixer to make it one unified piece. So there are actually join marks in between, even though this was all printed in one piece. So this print is 103 centimeters long. On almost every printer that you can buy, certainly at a consumer level, even at a prosumer level or a giant machine like the Rat Rig V cores where you can go up to 650, you would not be printing this blade all in one. You just wouldn't. 
because you don't have the build volume. This printed flat like that, but if you look down the if you look down the blade, you can see that this blade is bowed. Now you can fix that with a little bit of heat. So you put it on a flat surface, you clamp it down, you apply some heat, and then you leave it to cool, and it will cool straighter. The reason why this happened on ours was because we didn't have Scott's modification, where he's got an extension that goes on the bottom of the bed that gives it a little roll tray. As this was coming off the bed, the weight of this was weighing it down, and that is what caused it to bend like this. It just bent under its own weight. This is only 20 mil thick, and it's only a 15% infill. So it is not strong enough to be passed out off of a warm belt and not bend. It's only PLA. The handle we did on our Sidewinder, um, our Sidewinder is under extruding at the moment, so the blade is by, by the handle is absolutely no, by no means perfect, but the blade came out really nice, and we'll show some print results and some quality close up in a moment. Um, I have to say that I really love the kit. Um, again, the quality of the kit is bang on. The chaps who have been making it, um, a guy called Andreas and his team in Peru have done a fantastic job. The instructions are really clear. It is actually really easy to assemble. If anything, it's slightly more complicated to disassemble parts of the Ender 3 um, than, it was to, than it was to get all this assembled. It's a little untidy in places where they've not sort of maybe put in drag chains or something like that. The problem they've got is that they're limited by the by the size and positioning of the of the original ender um, material so for example this x-axis um this x-axis cable isn't long enough to run in a drag chain all the way along so you'd have had to have replaced all your hot end um all your hot end cables and you know it, it just becomes a much larger job um in doing that the kit is absolutely bang on i know i keep saying that but the quality of the kit and the thought that's gone into it the machining of the parts the parts that we've received all really good um leveling the bed was a little harder for us we don't have a stock ender three glass plate um so our springs even though we had the yellow springs our springs actually bottomed out trying to get this to fit so we had to use uh, nylock nuts to, uh, to get the bed high enough to mean that it would actually heat and sit parallel with the bed. But once we'd done that, this, act, this absolutely started doing its job properly. Um, and it's turned out some really nice prints. Should you buy one? That's a difficult question to answer. So my new favorite phrase on the channel is a tool for a job, right? We are in a place now where you can get high quality prints out of even the cheapest printers. You know, you can get high quality prints out of an Ender 3, a CR10, a, a Focus um, Odin 5, uh, an Artillery Hornet, longer LK4s, really any of them can turn out really good quality prints. Does this turn out quality prints? I think it does. I think they are comparable to what you would get out of an Ender 3. And the prep time you will save yourself in simply coating this in some filler primer and sanding it back to remove layer lines, rather than having to try and remove join lines, is great. The problem is, is that the vast majority of STL files are already cut up to go on a regular Cartesian. There aren't people who are really designing files to be printed on Infinite Z printers. Um, for example, this I-Beam, I had to scale up 450 odd percent from where it originally was, just to get it so that it would actually print off of the bed. Um, this was originally cut into pieces. I had to assemble this in Netfab, and as I say, you can actually see the join lines where the initial STLs were joined, because that file wasn't, didn't come all as one piece. It wasn't designed to be printed as one, it was designed to be cut up. And as a result of cutting it up, you would have had keys and holes in the middle of all of these to create strength in the blade. It's only PLA plastic at the end of the day. We don't have that now. Um, you know, this is a tool for a job. I know that there's um, there's a channel called uh, there's a guy called William Finn. Um, he does a uh, he does a number of toys for tots prints, and doing sequential prints for him would make 
perfect sense. This is exactly the type of person that this printer is targeting. It's exactly the right kind of job for it and it does a very good, it will do a very good job at doing that. Even if you buy an Ender 3 brand new to use this, you are easily half the price of buying a CR30. A CR30 in the UK, if you can find one in stock, is anywhere from 750 to 900 pounds. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Bearing in mind that for 150 pounds and 280 pounds, you can buy an Ender 3 and this kit. So for half the price, you could get an Infinite Z printer. The problems with this machine have nothing to do with it being a belt printer. Not really. There's a bit of a surface texture that comes with the belt, but I can live with that. And again, it's fillable, it's fine. The issues with this machine are that there's an Ender 3 in the middle of it. So we'd already turned our Ender 3 into a black belt um, printer, sorry, into a black knight printer, which was the, uh, which was the linear rail conversion. So our X axis has a linear rail on it. We've obviously put a we've obviously put a Titan extruder on the end to try and get over the uh, to try and get over the extrusion problems we've had, but because of the way that this is now mounted, which is slung back at forty five degrees, it would be very difficult to mount a direct drive extrusion on this. Very difficult. You are still stuck with the part cooling that came with the original machine, and these are all modifications that you can fix but then it's not really an Ender 3 anymore. We have the new Ender, the Creality Silent Board 4.2.7, and Andre was uh, very kind to do us a custom piece of firmware. He's very good and very quick at doing those firmwares. The group, which I highly recommend you joining, I will put in the video description, is very responsive, very helpful. Scott and myself are, uh, are both on there as well. We're keen to try and support people who are going out and buying the kit. There's a lot to like about it, the unfortunate reality is that it's an Ender 3 belt kit, and the part of that I don't like is the Ender 3 part. I don't like the fact that this is an Ender 3. It has bad part cooling, the extruder is bad, you can't do it, you can't change the direct drive, so you can never change other materials, and it's that that is the fundamental issue with it. That being said, all of those things are fixable with modifications. And if you're that concerned about direct drive, you could buy the Sidewinder conversion. Now, admittedly, you pay more for a Sidewinder, but once you've converted it, I challenge you're still probably under the price of a brand new CR30, and you would have direct drive, you'd have chunkier rails, you'd have a sturdier frame, you'd have an AC heated bed, and you'd have a you know, touch screen on it, and everything else. It's a great machine to convert if you have a use for Infinite Z. Because there are areas that this struggles in that a regular Cartesian wouldn't. Now, if it is just sequential printing you're looking to do, and you're not looking to do extra long prints, then the guys over at belt3dkit.com are in the process of testing a 90 degree belt kit version, which basically pitches this back up at a normal height, prints completely normally in a normal build volume with a normal Y as the belt, and then enables you to continue printing sequentially. So if sequential printing is what you're buying this for, you don't need to buy this kit. You can just go and buy the 90 degree belt kit um, and that will do the job brilliantly. This kit is specifically for people who need to do full size, extra long prints. And it does those prints very well. Once you've got the ender part solved. It's not the kit that has issues. It's the fact that at the heart of this is an ender three and it's not a good machine. That's the reality. So before we go, let's just take a close up look at some of the print quality and we can show you some of the textures that we're talking about with regards to how the belt looks and things like that. But let's take a look at them. Right, so let's start with the obligatory calibration cube. So let's get that in focus to begin with. There we go. So you can see here, this is where, this is the texture I'm talking about on the belt there. It's quite a raised texture and you can see 
that this was the first line. So the way this printed was like this. And as a result, that first line on the vertical is not great. But I'd argue that the rest of that has actually printed quite nicely. A nice sheen, decent extrusion, done a really good job. We have the Benchy. So the Benchy has suffered from the same issue. So if we get that in focus, you can see this prints like this. So the tool head goes back this way. And you can see that it's really struggled with that because this is not flat. It's trying to print over here before it's printed back there. And the same issue we have with the bridging up here as well. And that's the same for all of those benches that we printed all in sequence. They're all pretty much the same. Quality is still pretty good. You know, you've still got the shine on there. That first layer has still got that texture on it. But adhesion wasn't an issue. It's done a pretty good job. But it's not really for these kinds of prints. So then we find ourselves with the I-beam. So let's get see if we can show this in the way we need to. There we go. So you can see that the texture on that, this is the belt side. So that's got a real rough texture. And then this is the surface. And you can see that repeating pattern there. Look at that. You can see that repeating pattern from those belts. It's nothing you can feel. So if you were to put a coat of filler primer over that, it would be gone. You wouldn't see it. You can see here, we originally had a little bit of adhesive on the bed. We have cleaned it all off since then because the adhesion, the adhesive wasn't actually required. Um, but you can see, again, if I get that to focus, you can see that belt texture on there. Then we have our Witcher sword. So again, well, you can see that belt texture on there. And then this is the surface texture. So if we go along, you can see just here, that is where the two STLs, this line right here, is where those two STLs were joined in NetFab. Because again, this model wasn't meant to be printed as one. And there's another one just there. You can see it just about. Coat of filler primer and some sanding and you wouldn't know it's there, but you can just see it here as well, where those STLs joined together. So really, really good prints to be fair. So million dollar question, should you buy one? Okay, so a tool for a job guys, a tool for a job. If you have a need for an Infinite Z, absolutely buy this over a CR30. It is fundamentally cheaper and does exactly the same job. It, does a, it has a really nice finish to it. The kit is really high quality. The parts are all good. Everything, you know, there's no, we've been using this now for well over sort of 250 hours worth of printing. There's no signs of wear. There's nothing, there's nothing really that, that, that sort of causes me concern in the kit itself. But if I'm honest with you, if I had a need for a belt printer, I would probably buy the Sidewinder kit. It's just, to me, the Sidewinder kit is just more versatile. It, it starts with a much better um, machine to begin with anyway. And then from there, it just builds on the fact that it's sturdier, it's got a better frame, it's got better components, it, you know, it can print faster. It's, it's got a lot of stuff going for it that this machine just, just doesn't, unfortunately. Um, the problem really is I don't think I have much of a use for it. If I had a need for sequential printing, I would buy the 90 degree kit because the 90 degree kit doesn't require you to reinvent the wheel. Right, you haven't got to completely reimagine how this is sliced. You haven't got to completely rethink how you know how this needs to how this needs to go together. You're not changing the way supports go in. You're not changing the way you're not changing specific orientations. It prints like a regular printer. It can just print sequentially. Um, 
Do I think you should buy one? If you wanna, yeah. I mean, if, if we're giving it a score, I would score this a solid eight and a half out of 10. The kit is great. Once it did the upgrades, the print quality went up drastically and it does exactly what it is trying to do, which is become an Infinite Z machine. The problem is, is I don't think as many people require it as they think they do. I don't think there are that many people that need to print a meter long sword all in one piece because you could have gone on Thingiverse and got this file and printed this on a regular Ender 3 and just filled the gaps. This has made my life slightly easier in printing this all as one. Do I think this is changing the game? No. Do I think the future of 3D printing is belt printing? No, not at all. Do I think that there are certain people who will either A, find this cool, or B, find this useful? Absolutely. And it is a shining example of what this community can do when we sit down and put our brains to try, you know, put our mind to trying to achieve something. This is a team of people who have designed something for a half the, I mean, if you've already got an end of three, a third of the cost of a CR30, which is a huge achievement. Even if it's just to stick your fingers up at Creality, you should get one. But not everybody needs this. This isn't an essential modification that you need to make. And if you do make it, you need to make sure you're making it for the right reasons. Because this changes your machine. Changes how you print. It changes the types of models you can print. And I think it's important to think about that before you dive into it, because it's an involved modification. But that's, that's, that's the video, guys. That's, that's the end. If you guys want one, we'll put the link in the video description to this. Um, we've really enjoyed making it. It's been a journey. Thanks again to Scott Meredith from Edge of 3D. I'll put a link to his channel as well if anybody wants to watch his detailed assembly instructions and things like that. Highly recommend you go and check out his channel as well. But thanks very much for joining us, guys and dolls. We'll catch you on the next video.